Hey, what is up guys? It's Stan here back with another video. So what I've got here is the brand new uh, Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Air that was recently announced last week. And I've got it in my hands here and I just did an unboxing and I'm getting to know this system, getting to play around with the system for the very first time. But I wanted to give you guys a first look of this computer and talk about why I purchased it and what you can probably expect from this system and why you might be, should be interested in something like this. So this system right here, this is again, the 13 inch MacBook Air. This is actually the very, very base MacBook Air. So it comes in at like $800 or $900. How much did I spend on this thing? So this computer comes in at right at $999 uh, for the spec that I've got. This is the 8 gig version, 8 gig memory version with the 256 SSD. In fact, this computer is actually here to replace the 2018 MacBook Air my wife has. Um, spec wise, spec for spec, price wise, this um, this computer is a couple years old, but it came in. This console came in at about. $1,100. It's also got eight gigs of memory. It's got an Intel CPU. Um, and it's also got the 256 gig SSD. On paper, at least brand new, they're very, very similar systems. However, of course, this has the Apple M1 chip. Now, physically, these two computers are virtually identical. And, and I really mean virtually identical. If you were to swap it up on me, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. But you can see here, the height of the computers are the same. The dimensions of these computers are exactly the same. So physically, these two computers are virtually identical except for the keyboards. Now, the 2018 still has the, the butterfly mechanical switches. Uh, the 2020 has the brand new um, Magic Keyboard keys that we had found on the 16-inch MacBook Pros. Um, I think, in fact, I think last year there was a little refresh of the MacBook Airs that got the um, with the new scissors keys. But that said, like I said, it's it's a nice change, but um, physically they're very similar. Now the major difference between these systems, again, is the processor. You've got the Intel processor on the MacBook Air, the old version, and you've got the Apple Silicon M1. Now, why is why are we even talking about this? What kind of performance increase are we really talking about here? And you can see I ran Geekbench on both computers and the old system, the 2018, pulled a single core score of 844 with a multi-core score of 1750. So, uh, you know, this is a dual core computer. Um, it really isn't meant for all that speed. It's just, um, you know, it just, it, it's entry level computer. However, the M1 chip, it's got an eight core CPU with four big cores, four little cores. Uh, the single core sp score on this system right here, this has 1694. 1694 is basically double of the single core score of uh, the old one. And the multi-score on the other hand is 1729 versus 1750. So over four times faster on the brand new MacBook Air versus the old MacBook Air. So from the numbers, again, I know Bench, uh, Geekbench is a synthetic, but from the numbers, it totally blows the old MacBook Air out of the water. It, it's a whole different leak. In fact, it's so fast when it comes to synthetics. If you compare this computer with my maxed out 16 inch MacBook Air or Pro, 16 inch MacBook Pro, um, if you look at the single core score, the M1 chip on the MacBook Air is actually faster. 1694 versus 1186. That's like 30, 30, 30 plus 30, 40% faster. Um, and then you look at the multi-core score. Now this has got the eight core maxed out processor with 32 gigs of memory. So this is, this is a powerhouse laptop. But even with that, the multi-core score comes in at 7275 and the MacBook Air, base level MacBook Air comes in at 7239. So we're basically right at the same level. So faster single core and same multi-core score, this thing 
At least Geekbench is telling me this thing could be just as fast as this computer right here. So that is impressive. I, I don't know. We'll have to take a look at the actual performance of the applications, but at least on the synthetics, this MacBook Air, the entry-level MacBook Air, looks to be an amazing system. Uh, battery life, again, I just unboxed it, got this thing up and running. I haven't been able to test out the battery life, but from reports other people are claiming, the 18-hour battery life seems to be pretty appropriate. It, it is gonna be a substantial increase compared to the other computers here. Um, and will you actually get 18 hours? That's dependent on how you use it, what you do, but um, you know, it's gonna be 40, 50% faster or longer battery life than whatever you're gonna be doing on the older computers anyway. So let's talk about who this computer is for and who should be picking this thing up. If you're in the market for an entry-level MacBook Air or 13-inch MacBook Pro, uh, and you're doing basic day-to-day -day stuff like uh, word processing, Excel, email, web surfing, watching videos, Netflix, look no further, pick this up. Uh, don't even bother with the Intel, Intel based Macs. Um, you actually can still pick up the Intel versions of some of the uh, MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs. Uh, the processor is fast, the user, everything, everything about this computer is snappy, so you'll be very, very happy, and, and the battery life is insane on these computers. Now, if you are looking for something more production-based, meaning you're doing Final Cut Pro or you're working with the Adobe Suite, and you're in the market, um, these computers are clearly very, very powerful, but I would be a little bit hesitant to recommend these computers just yet because clearly these are early days, right? This is a first generation product of M1 processors, and this is very, very early days of that first generation product. And clearly, um, you know, a lot of the software still needs, has uh, to be worked out to be able to be compatible for, for this system. Um, I'm not saying don't buy it, but just be aware that there are some, some compatibilities or some applications like Photoshop are still in beta, right? Uh, if you are really looking for a powerhouse of a you know, laptop using Apple Silicon, I would probably recommend waiting for the 16 inch version of the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, just because uh, by the time we get these updated with the Apple Silicon, that's gonna be almost like a second generation M M1, M2 processor, M1X, or whatever they wanna call it. Um, second generation Apple Silicon processor. By then, you'll have a little bit better compatibility with uh, applications. Um, so, so I would be on the lookout for something like that. However, if you are just you know, if you're looking mainly to use Apple's own suite of applications, uh, Final Cut Pro, for example, or, um, you know, Apple's built-in applications, first-party applications, I'm, I'm sure this works just fine for those needs. So really, what I guess what I'm trying to say is this is a killer laptop. Uh, there are clearly going to be some limitations, but if you are okay with those limitations, for now at least, uh, I would totally recommend picking this up if this suits your needs. So that was just a very quick look at the 2020 MacBook Air. I'm gonna be doing some more benchmarking. I'm gonna be doing some uh, video editing tests. So if you wanna see those kind of videos on this MacBook Air, make sure to subscribe. Uh, you know, I'll be, probably be putting those videos out later in the week. Anyway, it's Stan. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one.